We heard early on that Ultimate Spider-Man, the big relaunch happening in early January for Marvel Comics, had been a big success, a massive hit. I've heard from a lot of comic book retailers that the thing absolutely sold out immediately. A lot of comic book retailers have actually said Ultimate Spider-Man relaunch should have been even bigger, but people were a little apprehensive when it came to Marvel Comics and their launches and whether or not they were going to stick to it. It appears Ultimate Spider-Man does have some staying power. I do believe the absolute quality associated with Ultimate Spider-Man number two, and I did a review exclusively on Patreon a couple weeks ago has something to do with that. And we're going to try and suss out exactly what these sales numbers are. And I'm not going to be able to do that because we don't actually get that kind of data. But we do have enough information surrounding Ultimate Spider-Man to comparing it to some other titles and the entire month of February sales and where it ranks in there to where we can kind of come to an idea of just how successful Ultimate Spider-Man number two. Here's the hint. It absolutely beats the shit out of Batman. It beats the shit out of Thundercats number one, which is acclaimed for being like, I guess, the best selling dynamite comic book of all time and basically everything else. It is destroying everything and is absolutely the hit the comic book retailers and comic book readers really and comic book reviewers and comic book YouTubers we all needed because there's just been this dearth of anything out there to get excited about other than the Energon universe obviously occurring at the very end of 2023. And now we have Ultimate Spider-Man, a character that everyone knows and we are getting the version of Peter Parker Spider-Man that we've all been asking for, begging for, for 20 damn years. And I think the fans, the Marvel Comics readers, the Spider-Man fans, just comic book fans in general have told them, yes, please, we know what we actually want. If you deliver it to us and it's pretty good, that's exactly what we're actually going to buy. Peter Parker, married to MJ, two kids, becoming a superhero, this is what people ask for. And Ultimate Spider-Man number two outsold Batman 144 in comic book stores last week, according to the Bleeding Cool Weekly Bestseller list compiled by over 140 direct market comic stores from their Tuesday to Friday sales. Ultimate Spider-Man outsold Batman by a ratio of five to three, an enormous victory for Marvel's Ultimate Spider-Man over Batman Joker year one. That is a fantastic ratio. For those of you who do not know, typically, when they would do the comic book sales rankings and everything, they basically did the Batman index. And whatever Batman sold was 1.0. And then whatever percentage you had was based on that going down. And if you outsold Batman, you would have like a 1.1 ratio or something like that. As an example, if Batman sold 100,000 copies and you sold 110,000 copies, the Batman index for Batman would be 1.0 and your comic book would be 1.1, that kind of thing. But in this case, I guess the Bleeding Cool bestseller list is being indexed on the bestselling title. Obviously, Ultimate Spider-Man number two being the bestselling title is the 1.0 and then everything underneath it is based off those sales. And Batman being at a 0.59 basically is 60% of the sales of Ultimate Spider-Man number two. That is a huge win. We all know that the number one issue always sells much, much greater because you get the publicity, you get the speculators that jump in there looking for something that might be valuable in the future. You get all the ratio variant covers and all that kind of stuff and all the stories are doing exclusive variant covers and all that kind of stuff. And then you get a lot of attrition through issues number two and three before it kind of settles out at issue number four and then steadily kind of declines over time. There are some comic book titles that don't have that steady decline Amazing Spider-Man being a pretty damn good example. Batman being another example. The reason that it's always been the Batman index because it is a very steady selling title. It's always near the top kind of thing. And for Ultimate Spider-Man to absolutely pants the shit out of Batman Joker year one, I guess that's part three, I believe. I believe that's part three. Uh, really says something about the interest and the quality of Ultimate Spider-Man number two that people are coming back because these aren't based on sales to comic book shops from the publishers. These are based on comic book sales to the customers, the ones that actually went to the store, physically paid for the comic book, and then walked out. So these are based on sales to customers, and that is a very good thing because Ultimate Spider-Man number two is a fan-fucking-tastic comic book. It's everything that everybody ever wanted from Spider-Man over the last 20 years. As we've been telling Joe Quesada and then Axel Alonso and now C.B. Sabolsky, please, this is what we want from Ultimate Spider-Man, and Marvel Comics obviously need a hit. And hopefully DC Comics will be able to follow in kind. We do know that they have their own version of an ultimate universe with Batman, Superman, and Wonder Woman coming out. Do not know that it'll be as successful as Ultimate Spider-Man because I don't think those books are actually going to be giving people what they wanted. I don't think those books are delivering something that people have been pining for for two decades at this point. 
Uh, they're actually just giving you kind of weird versions of heroes that, for the most part, don't make a whole lot of sense. But we'll get to that when the details are actually out about this DC Ultimate lineup. Now, we can take a look at the success of Ultimate Spider-Man number two in a bigger scale picture. If we take a peek at the February sales rankings from ICV2.com, based on Comic Hub point of sales data from 4 February until 2 March, we see Ultimate Spider-Man number two sitting in the top spot over Thundercats number one, a comic reported to have sold over 170,000 copies to retailers. Thundercats had 47 unique variant covers that accounted for over 70,000 of the order. Ultimate Spider-Man number one was also the 25th best-selling comic book in February, despite being released on 10 January. It is no small feat that Ultimate Spider-Man number two, you know, obviously outsold Batman 144 and 143 and 142, all came out in the same month. It was Joker year one. It's no small feat that it actually outsold Dynamite's biggest selling comic book of all time, Thundercats number one, which had 170,000 in pre-sale orders. A lot of it based on exclusive variant covers and stuff like that. If, but just on the A cover, I think it's at 90,000. Do I believe, based on Comic Hub data and all that stuff, that every single one of those 170,000 copies were sold to customers you know, during the month of February? Absolutely not. That is a lot of comic books. That is a lot of orders based on variant covers and ratio variants and all that kind of stuff. But it likely sold a lot of them. It did sound like it was a popular comic book. I don't think that Thundercats will be in the discussion with Energon or Ultimate Spider-Man moving forward because I just don't think the quality was there. I don't think Declan Shelby is actually a good writer. And for the most part, sadly, uh, Dynamite do not seem to be interested or take hiring competent writers uh, very seriously. I think they're more interested on doing variant covers and stuff like that. But that's just my opinion of the publisher. Not a very good comic book. But Ultimate Spider-Man number two outselling a pretty hot comic book is no small feat. How many copies do we think perhaps Ultimate Spider-Man number two might have sold knowing that it outsold Batman, the perennial best-selling ongoing series in comic books, you know, five to three. I think there's a good chance on, on issue number two that Ultimate Spider-Man number two might have sold like 150, maybe 155,000 copies would be a mind-numbingly awesome number for Ultimate Spider-Man considering that it's supposed to be an ongoing you know, it would make sense that I, I do have a feeling or I've had a feeling lately. Batman has settled into that like 80 to 90,000 range as far as comic book sales to comic book retailers or whatever. And it would kind of make sense for that number. So there's a good chance, a very good chance that Ultimate Spider-Man number two actually sold, put into the hands of customers over 150,000 comic books, which is an enormous win. And I do hope the retailers are able to sell all the variant covers and, you know, the one in 25s and the one in 50s and the one in 100 and all that stuff and are making a shitload of money because they went through a terrible 2023 where Marvel and DC were putting out nothing of note, nothing that was really interesting people for the most part. It was people showing up, paying for Batman, paying for Spider-Man, and a couple other titles that they're used to paying for, going home and not being excited about comic books. I think people are legitimately, legitimately excited about Ultimate Spider-Man and what it pretends. Now, we also did see Ultimate Black Panther in there for the number one issue. It was actually outside the top ten. There was a lot of positive buzz about Ultimate Black Panther, but it does not appear that Ultimate Spider-Man and all that success is transferring completely over to Ultimate Black Panther. Uh, hopefully there's some staying power because I do think Brian Hill is a good writer, and I think Stefano Caselli is an amazing artist. But unlike Ultimate Spider-Man, Ultimate Black Panther isn't really giving people something that they've been clamoring for for 25 years. I don't think people have been you know, at home going, God damn it, why won't Marvel just give us you know, Killmonger and Storm as a couple. I, you know, why can't we have Okoye and T'Challa married? They are certainly giving us stuff that's different, but it's not stuff that people have been asking for and begging for for two decades, like giving fans to Peter Parker, MJ marriage with kids and all that kind of stuff, which I do think is certainly one of the reasons that people are excited for this. But I just think the quality is really there. It is really high quality stuff. And I do have some bad news. I don't want to get into it now. Let's get into some good news, some more good news, before we get into some of the bad news on why this might not be everlasting or might, why it might not last all that much longer. But before then, I know this isn't a Transformers or Energon Universe vid, but we do have to acknowledge Transformers number five outselling Amazing Spider-Man in February. An event tie-in comic book. Cobra Commander number two staying inside the top 15 at number 13 and Duke number three at number 33. Although it was released on February 28th, are huge wins. Keep in mind, anytime a comic is released in the last day or two of the month, their actual sales rankings are deflated. 
in comparison to how they've done in other months. The Energon universe is definitely the second hottest thing in comic books today. And thank goodness there's something else that's hot out there. But Transformers competing with ASM for the monthly sales, like that's that's a huge achievement for Image Comics and Skybound and Daniel Warren Johnson and everybody involved with the Energon universe. I will caveat, just like um, Duke number three, I believe, Amazing Spider-Man 44 might have been a final day of the month release, so those numbers might have been deflated. It probably did end up selling better than Transformers number five like in the long run, but probably not by a lot. And just having a top 10 selling title that's doing that well is awesome. And obviously the G.I. Joe stuff is awesome. And it's it's good to see because comic book shops and comic book retailers have been waiting for some hotness, something that really had some staying power to really help out comic book shops and get people in there excited to go and check out other wares and go out and check out other comic books out there. Now, here's the bad news with all this, with Ultimate Spider-Man and with the Energon universe. And it's something that I think is going to come back and bite Marvel Comics in the ass, and it's something I think that's going to come back and bite Skybound in the ass. Is people, the publishers themselves, weren't thinking long-term when they decided to do these projects. They weren't thinking Ultimate Spider-Man might reinvigorate the entire line. We need to have a three-year plan. From what I'm told, and it's a very reliable source, Jonathan Hickman and Marco Cicchetto are only contracted to do 12 issues of Ultimate Spider-Man, 12 months of work. If that is the case, and they both leave the project after 12 issues, that will have been an enormous folly on the part of C.B. Cebulski, Tom Brevoort, and David Gabriel, and everybody else associated with Marvel Comics, not seeing that this thing was going to be hot, that it was going to be important, and was going to be vital to the long-term success, or even the medium-term success to Marvel Comics. Ultimate Spider-Man being hot could last and be a top-selling comic book for like eight years if it's well done with the right creators. I don't expect that Marco Cicchetta would stay on the title for eight years, but you would hope that maybe they could get a couple years out of him and maybe three or four years out of out of Jonathan Hickman if it was doing well. Same thing with the Energon universe. From what I'm told, Daniel Warren Johnson has only been contracted to write 12 issues, obviously illustrate six. He's being replaced by Jorge Corona after the sixth issue as the artist, and I'm told that there's going to be a new creative team on issue number 13 as a writer and artist on it. Same thing with Duke and Cobra Commander. I'm told Josh Williamson is only contracted to do the four-issue miniseries there, and he's not really supposed to be doing stuff long-term, or at least if they had plans for that, they haven't signed the contracts yet. This short-term thinking, this idea that everything is a miniseries before it even launches, is going to be the death of fucking Marvel Comics and DC and the entire industry these are ongoing books. They are not graphic novels. These are not miniseries. These are the things that are supposed to keep people coming back to their shop, you know, and testing out other things and hopefully discovering that Green Lantern is really awesome right now. We're hopefully discovering that up until the last issue, Incredible Hulk have been a really good comic book. We're hopefully discovering that Team and T Saturday Morning Adventures is really, really cool if you like the cartoon and all that stuff. And go out there and hopefully blow up the sales and some other stuff and really be the rising tide that lifts up the entire industry because that's what Ultimate Spider-Man has the potential to be for years upon years. That's what a well-constructed, well-curated, well-executed Energon universe could be over the long term. But they have not thought about that. So that is really the only bad news I have in all this. Hopefully... They'll come back to the table. They'll offer Jonathan Hickman a raise and say, hey, we, we need you to stay on for two more years. We want you to do three years minimum on Ultimate Spider-Man. I imagine Marco Cicchetto, I think I've heard a rumor that he has another project that he's already contracted for, which kind of makes sense. You know, if you don't have a contract, that uh, Jonathan Hickman will be looking for their next projects or whatever. Hopefully, they get back to the table and they can lock some of these guys down for the long term. And I know this was mostly a positive video, and I've got lots of great things to say about Ultimate Spider-Man and Energon and all that stuff. But the death of periodic comic books is going to be short-term thinking, not thinking about these as long-term ongoing projects that should be lasting years upon years and really be steadying the entire comic book industry and, and raising sales all across the board. It's short-term thinking, treating Ultimate Spider-Man and Transformers and G.I. Joe and the Energon universe as all just a bunch of miniseries and bringing new creators on left and right that is going to turn everybody off and kill off the staying power for any of this stuff. In my opinion, hopefully they come back to the table. Jonathan Hickman, due to the success of this, is probably going to want some more money. But at this point, he probably earned it. And it's really Marvel Comics' fault for not signing him up for two or three years to begin with. 
I don't think Marco Cicchetto probably comes back after the first 12 issues because it sounds like he has another project. At least that was the rumor that I heard. But I would love to see him come back too because I think Marco Cicchetto is one of the things that makes Ultimate Spider-Man a really good series. And it's one of the things that I was most excited about was Marco Cicchetto illustrating a Spider-Man comic book. But that is going to be the death of comic books. These guys treating everything like it's a four-issue fucking miniseries, not realizing that Ultimate Spider-Man with superstar creators probably was going to be a phenomenon within the comic book industry. I do want to say thank you very much and invite you to come over and check out the Patreon because we have way more conversations about comic books and geek culture and all that kind of stuff going on over there. We are not constricted to the time constraints that YouTube puts on us. We get to go for two, three hours at a time on the podcast air. Awesome guests like Aaron Sparrow, Doc, Jim from Weird Science, yours truly. The most fun to be had in all of comic book geekdom is on the Thinking Critical Patreon. I invite you to go check it out right now.